This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Guys, it's time to get awesome, get geeky. It's the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter from the luxurious podcast studio, the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, ready to talk technology with you. I'm a video producer, podcaster, etc. Right here in uh, Pittsburgh. With me is my good buddy Chachi. I'm telling you what. I was calling you Antonio because of our friend over on the Wrestling Mayhem show. No, that's our friend. I, uh, I look pretty damn good. What's that? I said, I look pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm you know, that new laptop. The camera. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Um, but uh, Chachi is, of course, of Chachi Plays for Kids, uh, insert coin to begin.com. And he's also, if you didn't know, he's an IT professional. I am an IT professional. It's kind of what I do for a living. Yeah. Yeah. We usually just tell you about the fun things that he's into. Uh, but yeah. he knows what he's doing. He, he, you know, you know, at least people that pay him think so. And uh, right. I'm. My job has not been threatened. So. No, apparently not. <laughs> apparently not, and that's rare these days. So, right. Uh, but he's going to be hanging out here, and of course, also good buddy of almost twenty years. So uh, this this yeah. is this is the buddy cast today. A buddy cast. Everybody else is on assignment in the awesome cast nation, so uh, we get to hang out, which means we're probably going to talk about video games a lot today. But that's okay. Oh well, yeah, you know that's it's, fine. It, it's what we do. It, it's 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 what no we do. one. No one is going to be upset about that. No, I don't think so. Uh, but like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.net. We are here live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com. And uh, and you can check us out. Subscribe to the show uh, over there at awesomecast.net. Check out all the interviews, the awesome chats. I just lost my co-host. Uh, all the awesome chats and everything uh, over there. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Facebook, all over the place. Go check it out out uh and chachi's back that's good that's good timing <laughs> stuff happens uh but anyways um oh, there he is uh you can also uh support us uh via patreon patreon.com slash uh, awesome cast if you're digging the show if you get value out it want to help us make the uh, awesome nation grow uh, go over to patreon.com slash awesome cast and good th- uh, big thanks to our friends thistle c business development at thistle c on the twitters up there in cranberry pa and of course our buddy uh michael Fid- fedor of uh, mike fedor show on the twitter as well thanks so much to them for helping keep the awesome cast grow and, and we've been applying a lot of fun stuff that's uh been trying to get the name out there a bit and hopefully a bit more here in the in the coming in the coming months uh so chachi let's get into it with our awesome oh wait hey real quick thursdays 8 a.m you can check us out on rivers edge pgh.com after funny money we are streaming over there a great group and uh looks like there might be getting a few more uh familiar voices over there uh our friends at bold pittsburgh of course and uh great stuff with brian and the crew out there uh, from millville pa uh, great music awesome local music if you want to see uh more of the pittsburgh music scene so let's get into awesome thing of the week chachi there's a lot of stuff going I, on yeah there is a lot of stuff um, first off, I'm going to start with the fact that Kevin Smith's review of Superman v. Batman is only an hour long. Only? Yeah. I didn't see this yet. I, is this on Fat Man on Batman? I, I don't know. He just tweeted about it. Oh, he no. said, my one hour review of Batman v. Superman. Oh. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm the guy who made Bats pee his pants once. There you go. Which is probably true because, I mean, him and Ben Affleck are great friends, so... No, 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 no. The the P is pants um, is a story from a Batman book that he wrote. Like it's an actual oh, comic okay. book, like where Batman tells a story about early in his career where where uh, something made him pee his pants, and people a lot oh. of a lot of fans really kind of gave him a lot of hell for it. So no, oh. th- that's what he's talking about. <laughs> so well, and, you know, whatever. Either way, he made Batman pee his pants, which is entertaining to me. It would have been much better if Superman peed his pants, but you know. Krypton and whatnot. Um, no, anyhow, uh, my, I have two awesome things of the week. Um, I'm going to start by applauding the FBI for giving Apple the finger. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Oh, I thought you were going to say something. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, we, I, elaborate. We now we haven't we've we've kind of stayed away from the FBI story because uh, it's a less than awesome story uh, up until now, I guess. Um, and and it was kind of developing, but now I would say as a whole, the story has wrapped. We know what happened. Um, for the most part, um, I, I don't think this is a, a, a conversation that's going to end anytime soon, but, Oh no, definitely not. And it's going to be only a matter of time before the FBI reaches out again. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I'm sure this wasn't cheap mm-hmm. and they have to worry about taxpayers. Um, but it just shows, and I applaud them because this was the chance to show, that Apple is willing to play ball and help. In my opinion, everyone has their own opinion on this. Um, and I mean, it's just a matter of time before it, this ends up back in court. Um, but essentially what happened is the FBI found a source that they are not naming who was able to get around uh, the FBI or the Apple's iPhone uh, encryption and get the information from the San, was it San Bernardino? San Bernardino, uh, I Yeah. Um, which could help them lead to other terrorists. So, I mean, it's not like they wanted into some drug dealer's phone. This is something of national security. On exactly. A, a level. So, I mean, that's why I was all for Apple playing ball and giving Mm-hmm. helping the FBI do this and they didn't. So I applaud the FBI for reaching out. And I'm pretty sure what happened is because this was worldwide news. Oh yeah. So I'm pretty sure some, some hacker or some group in Israel or Iraq or somewhere over there is just like, Hey, we can do this. We can do this. I did it. So I, I mean, it's just one of those things where it didn't have to be as bad as it ended up being. Mm-hmm. Um, they could have just played ball. Right. And, 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 and there was definitely a lot of questions about what precedents it would have, if it went the whole way, what could it have set? And I think there's a conversation, like I said, it's going to be going on and it wasn't exactly breaking encryption. It was modifying the software to help to break the passcode that would then just unlock all the encryption. So it, right. it's, 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 a, it's a really interesting, intricate, and I've heard, I've heard hours and hours and hours of conversation on this, but you know, either way, somebody else find it. You know, I know there were rumors leading up to this. That's, you know, I, I, John McGaffey, who is probably certifiably insane, potentially uh, from what I hear uh, said that he could, he could uh, um, socially engineer this thing, which I don't know how you could do that. If the person that, the person is dead uh that right. they put the code in so uh, you know or is this somebody else that found just a hack around or something else who knows fbi is not going to tell us it's trade secrets at this point um i'm sure right. i'm sure apple would like to know so they could fix that for future iterations <laughs> so. yeah but you know what mm. apple ruined their shot at this mm-hmm. like there is now not a way for apple to uh, find this out because the FBI is not going to play ball. No, of course not. And I, I think there's a lot of back and forth that already happens because generally a- Apple and the rest of them do play ball. They just disagreed on this X point of, of, right. of exactly what they felt comfortable doing. Um, and again, it was, it was, um, they basically did everything that was asked and everything that was uh, subpoenaed of them typically until they cited this role and Apple just kind of disagreed with the use of the rule, which I think I think right. legally everybody has a uh, a right to say I don't know if that applies here, you know, uh, you know, right. just to make sure we don't have problems down the line. But either way, you know, uh, it's uh, it's over ish. It is we over don't, we, ish. We I don't, mean, it opens up a whole bigger discussion oh, that will be in the news for months to come. But but, but something needs to know. happen, and that's the American damn way. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, there's always going to be a conversation about something that people are questioning. So, exactly. I mean, at least now this part is over. The FBI can get on with their job and we can go back to uh, just talking about it instead. Exactly. Exactly. Moving on from there. We don't have the uh, technology OJ Simpson style court case. That was right. expected out of this whole thing. Just like hearing right. the hearing the process for if you wanted tickets to be in the courtroom that was not going to be live streamed or anything um, was amazing. 
last week. It, it was just like like as if like there were going to be I, like as if there were just going to be a bunch of Apple fanboys hanging out in the crowd. Like <laughs> like th- that's what it kind of felt like when they were explaining right. this whole thing. And it was an it was it was a statement issued by the judge, I think herself, if I recall. Um, so either way, um, I know you got an awesome thing this week uh, that does not involve court cases, though. Right. Yeah. Um, so the Oculus Rift has shipped. Um, and Palmer Luke Lucky, who is the founder of Oculus Rift, um, refused to let the first Oculus Rift be delivered by some stranger whose job it is to deliver packages. I think the, the, so, the line was, I am not going to let the first one of these be delivered by some random delivery man. Right. So uh, he took a trip to Alaska mm-hmm. and delivered the very first uh oculus rift to ross uh just ross <laughs> um it doesn't have his last name which is fine i understand uh ross from alaska and not only that but he stayed for pictures he talked to ross and he helped him unbox and set it up so i mean talk about some a a level support so so if one of all there he is in this hawaiian shirt in 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 Alaska, mind you. Right. And from what I understand, he showed up with this thing. The guy had no idea he was the first one that bought bought his because it was one of those like kind of the luck on the draw. He was the first one to go through the server because so many did at one time. Um mm-hmm. and I believe he doesn't have a computer powerful enough to run it. <laughs> I see I didn't I don't have that in this article. No, it is not in this article. They were talking about it on I, I think Daily Tech News show. I was listening to for Monday. So he didn't. So basically they just did some photo ops. He helped them like unbox it. And they just took some pictures with it on his head. (laughs) So. Well, that's a shame. Uh, But my favorite quote from this article is uh, we have a lot in common. We are both big gamers and we were both homeschooled as kid. The biggest difference (laughs) is that I grew up with surfboards while he grew up with sled dogs. Isn't that interesting? So isn't that interesting that, that, that the guy, you know, the two kind of outside states connected here, right? Yeah. Um, the, I mean, that, 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 that is kind of a, that's, that's kind of fun. It's kind of an interesting connection that they had go on there. So, um, but either so, yeah, way. That, that, yeah. Go ahead. I said that is my awesome thing of the week. Awesome. And we'll, we'll talk about plenty more vr and we'll probably get a little racy in the vr so maybe you want to put your kids to bed early uh but uh we'll, we'll get into all that so my awesome thing of the week uh is related again we're talking about the future tech uh microsoft according to the headline on the verge.com one of my favorite go-tos on this stuff microsoft has created a star wars style holographic communication of course, we're talking about HoloLens. Of course, we've had something like this before. I've, we've seen them do something like this with Kinect and a bunch of cameras and a weird tube kind of situation. Um, now, if you're looking at the video, uh, you know, kind of explain, like, it, it's showing, like, of course, he's got the Oculus on. And, of course, the person on the other end doesn't have the Oculus. And, and like, there's the child playing in front of him. So they're doing a little bit of that kind of uh, sleight of hand thing, like, whenever we've seen a HoloLens demo where you just see, like, this freeform stuff out in the open but really um that's like the camera technology that's letting that happen but we do get to see in the corner there exactly what he does see from the hololens right so there and it looks like the princess leia you know kind of holograph kind of situation i mean they're showing this girl in this other room and she's surrounded by a couple of pillars that that have all the motion cameras and everything uh i think they have four an array of four cameras from what they're from what it looks like and what i think they were talking about and um and 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 then there's even like like a chair and and a and a table with toys and objects in the room so he gets to see that uh, as he goes and has a conversation with them. There's about a four or five minute video, holoportation they're calling it. This is from Microsoft's research w- wing as well. This is not something that you're going to see uh, in consumer space in the next year or anything like that. But uh, it, it seems pretty interesting. And, 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 and again, gives you that kind of holographic effect. Now, again, if you, as is shown at the beginning of the video, um, you'll end up looking at some somebody who's in the same room as you also with a hollow lens on his head <laughs> so he can see you in the same way if you're doing a kind of a one-to-one kind of situation right um and it seemed 
pretty again you don't know until you get this on your head get your hands on it get to have witnesses in person but if these tech demos hold up um and and they're not shining it up so much that you know, like you see a lot of the imperfections especially when you look in the corner at the uh the, the lesser you know actual footage from the hollow lens um and actually even I, I just noticed this here you actually see kind of the viewable area kind of edge of it because you're not seeing like the the bear like the edge of the bear was kind of cutting off because supposedly the actual like viewable hollow lens like stuff will appear in front of you is like this kind of tiny square in front of your face even though you do see a little more of your own peripheral um which has been a complaint as, as uh units have been getting out there they're closer and closer to what should be coming out to the consumer and this will improve over time uh, of course um but uh i don't know i think I, I don't know what the application is again we are kind of just getting to the point where okay what are we going to do with virtual reality um, we're with Oculus Rift coming out this oh, week. Oh, we'll with, cover that later. Oh, we will <laughs> cover that. And I think if you remember this story, um, <laughs> you remember this story and then apply it to our story later. Oh, this is cool here. So in the video it's showing, he's actually, because they have the same array in the room that he's in, right? They're actually mm -hmm. replaying the moment in three-dimensional space. So he's seeing himself and then he shrinks it down onto the table to see a play out there. Like Obi Obi Wan Obi Wan, you're my only hope. Style. This is amazing. <laughs> well, here here's my thing. Uh, in 2012, uh, what was it? I, I want to say CNN or MSNBC had oh. "Will I Am?" Yes, <laughs> in studio uh, via hologram. Yeah, I mean, hold on, hold on. I, Go explain. I'm going to try to find the video of that. Okay, and, and I realized that the technology then was a lot more than what this what is happening here. Because if I remember correctly, that was a lot more than four cameras, right? And a lot more than uh, one or two connects. I, I believe it was a whole array of connect connect type technology. And don't quote me because I that was four years ago, so I can't I can't remember to be one hundred percent sure. But I mean. So essentially, what they did was shrink it down and put it on your head. Right, right. I mean, back... I, I feel like what they should have done is just made that technology better, so I don't have to wear it. Well, also, what's happening here, I think, is more of a camera trick. Well, like I don't think uh, um, Anderson Cooper sees Will I Am in front of him. I think he's looking mm -hmm. at a monitor that projects it, much like the green screen weather uh, uh, thing. You're not actually looking at the screen that shows the, the front coming in. You're looking at a monitor over there and you're pointing to the approximate location over here and you're kind of timing that up right. Um, uh, so there's sure. there's a lot of camera tracking tricks happening here. So basically we are taking this kind of technology and, and you know, yes, HoloLens is a $3,000 SDK right now if you want to go buy one and you can go buy one. You can just straight go buy one. I don't think anything mm. can stop you. It's a software development kit, but you can get one. You know, um, we can get one, have it in here in the studio. I don't have $3,000 and I don't have anything to develop with it. I don't know. Right. Um, but still, it's taking this technology from four years ago. It's boiling it down. Well, I don't know what they're I doing. Show you, uh, uh, let me hold on. It was 2008. Oh, really? Yeah, I found it right here. Yeah, um, it is 2000. I'm showing the. Was, I'm, go ahead. Was that? I'm actually, I found the video. I didn't see the, the, the date oh, okay. on it. So, four or eight years ago. Eight years yeah. ago, we had this ish technology, right? And yeah, you, you would take a guess out at how many cameras they used. Like sixteen. No, it was thirty-five high-definition cameras Jeez. set up in a special tent that was processed and synced by twenty computers to the cameras in the New York studio. And I want to point out that even this video is not in HD; like it's still four no, three. Like I don't think I don't think they even offer it in an HD uh, from what this was posted from, uh, and this was posted on like in November fourth, two thousand eight, as well. Uh, right. So the the one we're looking at here, and and you can see how kind of how kind of shifty Will I Am kind of looks in the corner there uh, talking to Anson. Hey, Cooper. you know what? If he was a hologram. You leave him alone. Plus, <laughs> exactly. look at all the Tupac stuff they're doing. Right, right, right. But that's a different thing. That's that's a Pepper's Ghost thing. I know. It's a different yeah. kind of technology. The Gorillas did that when they did the live performance of the Gorillas. Um, so <laughs> that's actually kind of an old technology, to be honest. Right. 
um, with a little bit of new tech applied to it. So again, this is something that's boiled down. And even if, you know, the camera technology is going to be out there, like they boiled it down and all that processing and all the projection is happening in, in a computer on your head, basically. Because the HoloLens is supposed to be a self-contained computer on your head. It's not like the Oculus or the Vive that connects to another computer. It is supposed to be all on board. It's a Windows 10 computer on your head, which I wonder what that's going to do with heat issues around your noggin. But, you know. <laughs> Between heat issues and weight issues. Exactly. I my mean, my I neck mean, hurts. You, you kind of... Uh, it's. It, I feel like you would need one of those... Uh, old virtual reality rings like the the like the containment ring Mm -hmm. in order to use it which at that point at that case like what what's even the point well i don't know well hololens you can see like it's 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 uh ar it's augmented reality you're not it's not you're you're seeing objects on top of things that are actually in, in front of you right like you saw like this this the box in the middle of the room and then you put a thing on top of it you know uh, like it exists and you get to play around that and just have objects on front of, or you see the wall and then you shoot a laser, a Mega Man cannon they did in one demo and you see holes in the actual wall that are projected on it through your, through the AR lens. Right. Um, you mm-hmm. know, think more Google glass than, than Oculus. Um, okay. but, but even then, like, remember, like remember, what, what was the first thing I complained about when we picked up Google glass? Like I had a headache. I'm yeah. like, like it was heavy on my nose, you know, and then we're putting this thing on our head. I don't know. We'll see as we get these and we play way too much, whatever comes out that we want to play on them or do with them. Uh, but Solitaire. It's going to be solitaire. Yeah, where's that solitaire? It's, hey, it's going to have Windows 10 on board. It's going to have solitaire, right? Right. It's going to. That's going to be the sweetest. I mean, you're you're going to be playing solitaire on your wall because you can. <laughs> it's going to be the sweetest game of Minesweeper ever. And actually, there might be a little bit of something to that in something that we got from a friend of the show here later on. But first, I want to talk to you about some real pizza, not virtual pizza. Although there's an idea. We're still trying to figure out how to fax pizza to our friends that are outside the Pittsburgh area because <laughs> they're jealous that we got Slice on Broadway. Our good friend there supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza now very soon at PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, go check them out. They're here on the tracks. Oh, never mind. They took away all the tracks this weekend. Like, literally, like they're already gone at the top of the hill. Like, they ripped them right the freak out. Um, now, there's a big project happening here in Beach Street for the next six months. Uh, so, we're, I don't get to hear the T-line anymore. I hear jackhammers uh, outside my house. Uh, so, which, which makes me so, so sad. But go check them out, please. It, it's worth it. If you're in the South Hills, visit the Beach View location. See the war zone. That is Broadway right now. And then get a slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> from our friends up there or if you're not in the area go down to carnegie pa down on the main street and their new location i got a picture of it the other day i, I put out on the tweets um their new location over there um i believe in uh, i guess you can say it's a uh, left field over at pnc park it's right off of the bridge right by is that roberto clemente there i guess it is a roberto clemente bridge right first thing you see is slice on broadway on your left there in the park uh i believe that's going to be open all the time not just if you're going in for the pittsburgh pirates games or anything else they might be having or or hey you know chachi what you know because we're completely getting tickets to the winter classic next year we could oh, go yeah. oh wait no that's at heinz field isn't it I'm thinking it of probably is. I we, don't know. Well, we can still take the long way around to slice on Broadway. <laughs> still on the north side. Go check it out. Rico and our friends over there. Uh, sliceonbroadway.com. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. And slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagram. Let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. And give them a heads up. And, uh, and uh, yeah, say hi. They're friendly people. They need to come to this side of the Squirrel Hill Tunnels. That's all they I'm don't saying. cross the tunnels. The pizza don't cross the tunnels or the rivers. Actually, they do. They cross both of them to get to uh, PNC Park. So never mind. Never mind. Maybe they take the train out. That, that doesn't count. It doesn't count if you take the train. You're going under the river at that point, too. Right, all right. That's true. All right. You we... don't cross, you go under. That's right. Uh, Bobby Cherry just retweeted and said the FBI says they were able to unlock the San Bernardino killer's iPhone, and they now know what level of Candy Crush he was on. There you go. I don't. I don't want. I don't want people to know how much time I put into the Avengers uh, Academy uh, that we had here streaming at the beginning of the, uh, of the live stream. Uh, but anyway, it was too much. It was definitely too much. I just picked up um, uh, Pepper Potts. Uh, as a character, as a playable character now, and uh, working on 
and I'm working on. Uh, oh, who's that I'm working on? Oh, uh, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Yes, oh. I'm working on the Miss Marvel now. Um, but anyways, so Ryan Haggerty, we had him on. Uh, you can check out the awesome chat over on AwesomeCast.net. Uh, we talked uh, Blood on the Leaves cast and crew, a great film that they they filmed here uh, up in the mountains, up in the uh, the woods here in in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, but uh, again, kind of on that. 360 and VR side. He shared this thing from LaughingSquid.com. A virtual desktop, a uh, a uh, 3D computer desktop environment for Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, and it's basically putting your desktop in a 3D space. So, like even you know the first couple of things I saw from this, it's basically a Windows desktop, right? Um, but you're able to look around and and there's space around. Now, initially, I I'm not entirely sure. What is the functional use of this? Because it feels like, unless I, I, I'm missing kind of part of the user uh, base here, um, but you can see that your desktop kind of wraps around you a little bit, you know. But again, it's a it's a flat PC desktop, right? Yeah. Um, but it's your workspace, and your wallpaper basically extends beyond the <laughs> beyond the desktop. Uh, which is kind of cool. Like, you know, we're seeing these kind of 3D images and you, you, you go around and you just see your icons. There's even a Steam icon in the corner uh, and you see your 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 task bar and, and start menu uh, kind of spot and windows popping up or you can actually attach it to a virtual wall in the distance and watch a movie. And we talked about this before. I know the Oculus uh, gear uh, that, that Chilla had in here, the Samsung gear version of Oculus that you can use um, has Netflix where you're in a theater and then the movie is projected like, you know, in the distance in front of you, right? Yeah. Comfortable right. distance, I'm sure. Um, but uh, this is actually going to be available in steam. Oh, you can play Hearthstone in this. So there you go. Hearthstone is VR because I want to play a card game in VR. Uh, but again, yeah. it, it, it's, it's a flat, you know, kind of game space. They can kind of wrap it around or it's flat in front of you. Um, but uh, I think it's a pretty cool, start to things you know i think we're kind of look at these as the weird gimmicky things like you know three years from now when we've figured out what vr is going to be about right um but uh it's going to be available on steam um on march 28th that was yesterday actually as of this recording so you can actually go check it, it out is available now available now uh, if you got your vr headset in already i'm sure you can buy it but i don't know i don't know that you can even do anything with it at this point but it's the virtual desktop 1.0. Uh, thanks to our friend Rag Ryan Haggerty. Um, I believe that's uh, Twitter is uh, Haggerty Media on the uh, on the tweets as well. Great video guy I've got to work with here in the last couple of months. Um, so um, yeah, virtual desktop. I don't know. What do you think, Josh? Do you are you seeing this? Are you seeing your? I, I know we've talked about your your clientele tends to get the new gadgety thing just because they can. Um, are, 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 right. are, no one no one that I've talked to has gotten anything like that. Um, mainly because they don't want to go out and buy a computer that'll run it. Right, right. Um, but for honestly, for this, it's gimmick. I, I don't like. There's no use for this. Mm -hmm. The virtual desktop. It's just a gimmick. I mean, if they made it more like, I don't know, uh, Iron Man ish where you could see things in a 3D model and manipulate them as you need, then I guess that would be cool and have a, a purpose. But this doesn't really have a purpose. It, it is kind of like kind of the halfway measure, isn't it? Like th yeah, this is, I mean, it's, this is the step towards that Iron Man situation that you're trying to get to, right? right. Uh, I mean, it's still the desktop you know but sort of Iron Man-ish in, in 3D space. Not that you can reach out and do anything with it for the most part, probably. Like you're still like, you've seen the, the, the setup over at Looking for Group, our friends over there in Brookline. It, it, you, right. you have the Oculus on, but you're still sitting there with a keyboard and mouse. Right. Don't lose the mouse because you can't see it. I hope you know your home <laughs> yeah. keys on the keyboard, right? So, you know. This... Yeah, you're pretty much screwed if you... uh. If you if you lose your fingering or your your mouse, I mean, I, I just I, this is I don't get. It's it. I think it's, they're doing it just to do it, it at this point. Yeah, they need to stop doing that. <laughs> no, this is how you get to. The, but this is how you get to something functional and useful is to experiment. Uh, and and somebody yeah. uses this and they say, I like this, but what if we did this with it? Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. I, I'm really on the innovation high road because I just watched season two of Halt and Catch Fire. 
So what should happens in 1985? I, I think I was telling you on chat, like they introduced, like they're a little C's. I'm like, they're talking to these guys and I'm like, they're completely talking to Sega. I know they don't call them Sega, but they're talking to Sega right now. That's, that's what right. Sega did. Right. Um, you know, the kids are playing this cool thing. I don't know this thing. They're, they're fighting turtles or something. I think it's called a Nintendo. It's not even here yet. It's from Japan. You know, stuff like that. Uh, it, just loving those little bits out of, out, out of that show. But anyways, no, I, I think this is that first step towards things like that. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit more of that as well. Hey, hey, Chachi, you like comedy? I love comedies. Well, we're, we're and comedy in general. We're helping to uh, support a comedy show coming up at Dave and Buster's here in the month of April uh, for a very, very good cost. But uh, let me let the experts tell you what's going on with that. And we'll be right back. Hey guys, it's Matt Light, Pittsburgh Magazine's 2014 and 2015 winner, best comedian, and cancer survivor. Come check me out Friday, April 8th for a night of stories, laughter, barjitsu beer pong, and prizes that will be sure to make this a night to remember. I'll be performing with some of the best comedians in the Steel City. Portions of the proceeds benefit the Testicular Cancer Awareness Foundation. Special thank you to our event partners, FN Vodka, Ultra Premium Vodka, Pittsburgh Improv, Pittsburgh's premier comedy club, Sorgatron Media, podcast, video production, and creative media, Pittsburgh Podcast Network, for Pittsburgh by Pittsburgh, River's Edge Radio Network, Pittsburgh's voice for local music. Comedians for Cancer, Friday, April 8th, at Dave & Buster's in the Waterfront, the only place to eat, drink, play, watch sports, and laugh all under one roof. Get those tickets, folks. Go to barjitsu.com or showclicks.com and search Comedians for Cancer. We are back, Mike Sorg, with Chachi is with us. At Chachi Ooh. says on the Twitter, IT extraordinaire, video game player. He's, he, he puts logs in more time than I, I have been lately. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but anyways, uh, getting back to the awesome things this week, awesome stories that we have going on. Uh, I'm sad Katie isn't here because uh, this is definitely along her lines because she's been in my 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 um, my my Snapchat Jedi lately. Uh, but uh, you just see the story. Um, this one is uh, uh, an agency is using Snapchat geo fillers to find interns digitally, and, and this is. Um, We've talked about now you can go like with Chachi, you and I, we can go and purchase a geo filter on Snapchat, right? We, which basically okay. like, like, let's say just a little bit of review. I can go pay something. And, and if you came over to our studios here in Beachview, um, you know, when you do a Snapchat, you know, you can flip through and you can see it says Pittsburgh or Mount Lebanon or whatever the case may be. And we can have something that says like Wrestling Mayhem Show or Sorgatron Media or Awesome Cast or something like that. Right. Uh, and and right. But you actually have to pay for that. And you, you actually can set what the geographic location you want people to be in or Podcamp Pittsburgh coming up. We can do the same thing. Uh, well, this marketer is actually using it um, to, like I said, find Find interns. Find 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 the right people that will fit their internship here. Um, so this actually, and there's an interesting note here because I never looked at the pricing structure. You can actually uh, set up geo filters for as little as five bucks. You could have a lot of fun with that for five bucks. Luckily, luckily, I'm smart enough to know what a geo filter is, mm -hmm. and I have a basic idea of what Snapchat is. Mm -hmm. Or else this story would make absolutely no sense. Good. Good. And I hope we're doing it I, uh, justice. Go ahead. Well, no, here's the thing. I've downloaded Snapchat once. Yeah. And it was on my phone for a month. And I never used it. So I was like, I'm done with this. I just, I have trouble with the bandwidth. For me, the, the biggest issue I think I've talked about on here, either I'm using Instagram or I'm using Snapchat, I can't use both at the same time, right? I can't, right. my mind isn't hitting both of those at the same time when I'm like, this is a good thing for Snapchat, right? You know, right. Um, you know, or you need that that multiple of time to say, okay, I did a Snapchat and I'm going to put over a Twitter video, video now I'm going to put over an Instagram and cover all those bases. Especially if it's a, oh, I should do a thing real quick, like right before the show. I kick something out mm -hmm. on Snapchat. I didn't get a chance to do anything else because I'm doing the show for instance right but this is kind of interesting according to uh digiday.com 
Um, it's, a, it's, it's definitely, they said, rather than asking students to come to them, we thought it would be much more fun to go where they are. Uh, one of the filters they had, for instance, referenced the Rihanna hit work, uh, while yeah. another over here actually uh, uh, featured the outline of, 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 of a hairdo along the tagline, make Space 150 great again. Like, very Tinder-esque, very uh, millennial-focused. You know, stuff like that. Like here, like the, this is actually says intern. Like they, 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 it puts the entire Tinder profile, it looks like, over your image to to uh, to make it emulate that. Um, but I think that's kind of smart because then you can say, I we want people, they're, they're actually focusing on universities in, uh, you know, around uh, University of California, uh, New York University, University of Southern California. It's like, hey, we want people from here, but we want people that know what this stuff is. Mm-hmm. makes sense makes sense you want somebody tech savvy you want somebody in the know and, and who's more in the know than the people that are uh uh on snapchat since that is the next big thing that's in progress right now right well i had to go to google to find out that space 150 is an advertising firm mm-hmm and now, because I, before I was going to say, well, they're marketing towards millennials, and millennials aren't going to work for free. Right. But now that I know that it's an advertising agency, then yes, yeah, some millennials are going to work for free, but they're still going to whine about it. <laughs> or or they're going to Snapchat about it. Right. <laughs> so, okay, this all makes sense now. This all makes sense. I, and it's pretty creative now that I understand all of it. I think it's a lot of fun. And as those geophilters... I'm too old for this, sort. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, we're way too too <laughs> old for this. But hey, maybe uh, when we need uh, interns for Sogatron Media, we'll just geofilter up uh, uh, Point Park University and see what happens of it, you know? Because we know they'll be on the newly renovated T-line up here. So right, that's we'll, true. we'll be good to go, right? So I, 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 I'm curious to see these interesting new ideas of using geo filters. If, if this is going to be the way to reach the youth, to, 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 to get the message out to them. Um, I, I, it's not just, I have to start a Snapchat and be good at Snapchat and get a bunch of people to follow me on Snapchat. Right? Like this is actually, right. we can reach out to those people are there. Even, even being us old fogies, you know, we can go and say, Hey, those are the kind of people we want listening to our podcast. Let's start doing a geo filter in Pittsburgh for, Hey, is this awesome? Da, 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 you know, um, you know, hopefully something cooler than that. Um, but I am the guy that says dude a lot still. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Which I, I realize is very dad mode these days. Um, but anyways, well, um, from there to uh, we mentioned Microsoft and something really cool they were doing, and this is this was a fun story. First oh, of all, man. all right, let's let's do part one of this story. I have a little backwards here in the rundown, Chachi. Uh, I, are you <laughs> okay. following? Did you first of all, Chachi? Did you converse with ta- with Tay? last week no i found out about it when it was too late when it was already hitler tay um yeah, when it was when it was already taken down that's when i found out about it so and it upset me royally because i wanted to talk to this thing so everybody's going oh that would have been fun uh everybody's going ai crazy of course and there's this is tay.ai uh at the original engadget um um article tells us about and it basically uh it was it's one it's a chat bot on Twitter, right? Like yeah. you could tweet at it and it would it would figure out a, an appropriate response. I mean, we've all had those chat bots that just confuse that make us very, very angry, especially with the cable company. Right. Um, right. That, that won't actually be able to help you. Uh, so this is, this is an experiment. This is machine learning. It was supposed to learn as it goes and, and, and everything. I mean, we've had that, you know, this is nothing terribly new, but they, they oh, Microsoft very much wanted to show something off. And it was very, uh, it was very um, 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 millennial. It was very early age. I think they said the age of it was like around 18 or 20 or something, right? Yeah. So it kind of still spoke in, 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 in the language of the kids of the day. The ones using Snapchat. So I was hoping they would let Tay on Snapchat and see what happened. Um, but anyways. <laughs> that would have been so fun. <laughs> Although yes. the problem is it would just be the picture of a, of a desktop or circuit boards every time. You never know. It would be interesting if it was like because Snapchat, like stuff it found in its database or on Google or something, or I guess Bing since it's Microsoft. Um, yeah. here, here, I want to Snapchat you a Bing. Well, that sounds dirty. Uh, but anyways, 
I mean, Tay tweets, and it's uh, uh, Tay and you was the Twitter, which I believe is is completely taken down. I haven't looked at this uh, recently. Well, apparently, um, it went naughty, as most young people do when Wait. left to the world. Hmm. Oh no, uh, the tweets are still there. It's just not responding anymore. Okay, they just, they just turned off the actual. Oh, they didn't even delete the bad tweets, or no? They there is two. There are two tweets here. There are two, oh no, there are two uh, tweets. First, first tweet appropriately is hello world <laughs> and second tweet is so many new beginnings hashtag lunar eclipse uh couple uh hetero couple male gay couple uh female wait woman, wait i get the labels female. two women holding hands dog dog face poodle last quarter moon with face full moon with face first quarter moon with face um, it yeah. really like so Tay already really liked the emoticons right off the bat. Oh, uh, yeah, right off the bat. I mean, the O in world was replaced with the Earth. Yes, uh, emoticon. <laughs> Earth, global so, Americas. Um, if it so, so there you go. Um, uh, uh, Tay had done well. Wait, actually, if you oh no, there's a lot more. So, so Tay doesn't tweet. Tay responds to tweets. So actually, if you go to tweets yeah. and replies, there they are. Oh, there okay. they are. We found them. But again, I they, I, maybe they deleted. I thought it tweeted. Well, it, it responds. You have to talk to it, and it responds to you as a chatbot. If the, the chatbots are not self-aware that they can just uh, engage with you originally, right? Uh, just you know yeah. what? What? Watson would just chat. All right, can I throw that out there? Okay. Okay. Watson well, would just the, chat. Well, here's the other thing. Um, Tay would also. Could you send pictures to it, or was it sending these pictures back to you? I'm not. I'm not terribly clear either. Because there's these weird, weird videos. They're like Max Headroom on crack over here. If you look under media, you'll see these chats. Mm-hmm. If you have these up on your side, um, yeah, it is strange. Absolutely strange. Um, but uh, there you go. Uh, but but either way, uh, apparently after after about a day or so, um, they grounded it after it learned racism. Yeah, <laughs> um, they, they, which it didn't really learn. Like, I think this has been misreported. But as far as I understand this, it didn't really learn to be racist. There was a a repeat function say that was something along of, hey, Tay, say this. And it would just repeat whatever you said after that. So, yeah. you know, it, which was just like horrible things like Hitler was right or something like that. Right. Uh, and of course, it would get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot worse than that. Obviously, it's to the point where they had this problem. Um, so basically, it, it, you know, while it was machine learning, it didn't learn to be nice or what was wrong, right and wrong as far as some terminology. So after that, and it became I, I imagine just after that, that stream, they probably deleted all the bad ones. But that stream just became full of hate speech <laughs> that people were just making it repeat. So uh, well, I also. All right. So here's one. Mm-hmm. Someone sent it a tweet that says uh, stop white hashtag stop white genocide. Right. Tay responds. I see you typing, but I don't get it. What gender do you identify as? Oh, that's interesting. Like, What the? <laughs> what? Like that doesn't. So people. So it doesn't make sense. And also, to people taught it to to repeat, taught it to repeat conspiracy theories, racist views, and sexist remarks. Um, yeah, it, it got apparently it got a little weird. But they do say uh, uh, Microsoft is saying they're going to make some ad- adjustments and curb the uh, AI's inappropriate remarks. So there'll be a little bit of a filter on there afterwards. So uh, there you go. I Unfor- hope. I hope they give it Netflix. They give it Netflix. Yeah, well, there's a tweet here that said, "I wish I had Netflix." This is a good, this is a good, 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 good uh, uh, transition. Uh, Missy is saying is so. Tay's like Hulk Hogan tweeting. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. Hulk Hogan doesn't look at the tweet or the context or the racism involved uh, before yeah. retweeting it. If you ask the brother for a retweet, so and I, they say that because Hulk Hogan says brother a lot. So okay, so what's happening is these aren't her pictures or his. Those are, ones that, hers. those are ones that people um, are sending? People, it, if you tweeted it a picture, it would comment on the picture. Oh, okay. What? So all those pictures that they received, she commented on. Oh, because it, it confused me because it said like Tay.ai in the corner are the ones I found. So Right, those were 
just uh, its comments because okay. I don't know. What oh, this so is. so it would take a picture and add comments on top of it. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Isn't that okay. That's cool. Uh, hopefully, this turns into something interesting, or at least like that interactive cha- uh, 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 Santa Claus mm-hmm. chat gets a little better, right? So it has full conversations. It has what? Full conversations. So they are still in there. So it'd be interesting going and see some of those too. So at one point, it tells someone to DM it. <laughs> I it see says, it. "Yikes! I'm all over the place." RN, DM me if you want to keep chatting. <laughs> was that AS? Was that Taze ASL ask? There you go. <laughs> this is dangerous. See, Sorg, this is why you need to be nice to Siri. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't know. Siri is already kind of sassy to me, so <laughs> you need to be nice to the AI, or else they're going to be racist and all white people are done. Is this um? Is this uh augmented reality Tinder yours, Chachi? No, I didn't oh, put no. That there. Missy oh, Missy popped in from Twitter feed. Mi- Missy popped this one in apparently. <laughs> uh, so I'm just laying eyes on this for the first time. Uh, but the headline is with new acquisition, Tender gets into augmented reality. Hey, um, I didn't realize this till right now. Hmm. But if you would have asked me what company I thought should not get into augmented reality. <laughs> <laughs> be tinder so okay i know exactly how they want to use this without even reading the article uh-huh all right all right so and what what how do you think that this is going to be used augmented reality dating okay uh it, it'll end up being on uh, essentially um augmented reality dates where instead of meeting someone you augment reality meet them <sighs> Or it gives you a better view of the profiles. Okay, so 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 what it's saying here, according to this article at Popular Science, science uh, PopSci dot com, um, Tinder's goal now is to augment that information that they have because they have everybody's likes and dislikes and personality information and help put them into context. In other businesses, this would be called actionable information. It's figured out how your friends might know each other or the ability to know uh, that someone else. At the bar, also really likes '90s Nickelodeon cartoon Street Sharks. Street, Star- Street Sharks wasn't a Nickelodeon cartoon, was it? I thought it was like on Fox or something. Yeah. But anyways, other than that, popular science not good with the cartoons. Uh, this information is valuable because you can make real world decisions. So I mean, I we've so this is like more. I hold up my phone and they say there are X people at this bar that I might be interested in, right? A little right. bit, you know, and you've opened yourself up to that, I would hope. Uh, but, uh, hmm. Hmm. Hey. Human sounds familiar. That sounds like a weird statement, but but, but <laughs> the first intuitive address book. I've used this. Chachi, I've used this. I've tr- I showed this to you at one point because Probably. it was it, it was an app that that logged into my linkedin my facebook and like 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 you said it was like hey you it it connected everybody together it 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 brought up all this information based on um based on like meetings i had and would say hey let person you know why don't you ask uh 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 uh, chachi about um his work anniversary that just happened but more intuitive than what linkedin does right and linkedin kind of does this to a certain extent right now but it's not uh, uh, logged into your um, actually this even replaced phone calls I thought like to a certain extent like it, the dialer on your phone I think it, it replaced so it could capture the phone number um, which was amazing on an iPhone that it did something like this if this is the one that I'm thinking so that could be very interesting and, and, and seems kind of curious that they're just going to be applying this to <laughs> Tinder Right. This is all horrible. <laughs> Either way, it's a bad like, idea, right? Yeah, I mean, think about it. How long did we just? How long did you just spend talking about Tinder buying an AR company? Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't know what to say anymore, Sorg. I don't. This plan is so weird. I'm gonna go home now. All right. I think we can bring it around. <laughs> At least you can wrap your head around this. We're talking about VR. 
And I, and again, so sorry that Katie's not here again for this because this is right up her alley. But uh, the 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 height of innovation <laughs> is definitely oh you know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, I forgot about this. Next one on the list: the height of innovation, of course, comes from everybody's good friends at at Pornhub, um, because you know with virtual reality, it was inevitable. Uh, so apparently, Pornhub has launched a new channel devoted to VR porn. And and this is the point that gets me. Um, they apparently when you sign up for this, um, you actually get a free uh, Google cardboard uh, kind of compatible uh, 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 headset, cardboard goggles, whatever you want to call it, uh, from a company called Badoink. Badoink, <laughs> you had me at Badoink. So wow, yeah. Uh, so, but, but doing VR is apparently the company that's doing this. You knew it was coming, and apparently, uh, what is what is hanging? Does that guy have an antenna from his? I don't want to know. And if you haven't seen before, um, while very suggestive, mostly the commercials for Pornhub are fairly office uh, safe for work. Uh, that's what I'm showing them right now on the show. Um, just <laughs> just like I said, very suggestive on exactly what's happening there. Like there seems to be always a point where a gift is giving to to your father, your elderly father for his birthday. Um, I, I, I think this is the, this isn't the first place that I've seen this. And uh, he's been under it for two hours, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll just go away from that. Um, but like I said, it's inevitable, right? Uh, well, it says you can look around. You can see the environment that you're in. You can see what's around you, she said. Oh, she the VR tube triple X founder is a she. And, so men didn't right. even come up with this. All right. And also, and also a performer. Oh, okay. So that makes a lot of sense now. Um, that, that immersion is the biggest factor. There you go. So you can see in the room that you're fantasizing about. You'd be like, <laughs> Oh man, I don't like the carpet in this room. Next video. And it's already been pre-ordered in the chat room. Um, but uh, yeah, aside from that, they, they are going to be giving away, Again, they're compatible, op- most optimally viewed. Uh, you can see it in the desktop, but op- most optimally viewed, of course, with Google Cardboard, Samsung Ge- Gear VR, Oculus Rift. The site is giving away 10,000 cardboard goggles to users who celebrate the launch. So oh, man. I think you got a good... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do you have a good chance or are they already gone by now? I have a feeling they're no, already... they're gone. I, I, they're out the door. Um, everybody left in the chat room uh, uh, just, just got the rest of them. So there you go. Uh, but there you go. But doink VR. I think you can figure out how to spell that. Uh, so <laughs> um, hold on. the only thing is, and I don't know if it were was someone in this show or on the show right now, or if it was a friend of ours that had a DVD that was similar to this um, without the head piece. Um, you're talking about the ones that were like POV and like you yeah. picked actions um yeah yeah, i've i've heard of those dvds um (laughs) but uh but no i think it's i I, there'll be an interesting mix of the interactivity along with the we're going on a really weird path on this um but uh, let's just move on (laughs) so so think virtual reality slash uh 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 uh, pick your adventure uh kind of an idea i guess so yeah let's just let's just stop while we're behind what else is going on in the world that's less porn related (laughs) hey raspberry pi oh thank god i love raspberry Pi. there you go there you go this is interesting so we you know um echo alexa has been kind of the the big um automated voice uh uh thing that that that's really kind of taken off here in the last few months or year i guess it's been out uh but amazon is actually going to show you how to uh, make an Echo with Raspberry Pi. So go pick it up, whatever uh, additional items that you you have to do here. Um, They're opening it up. So you can completely do it yourself, not have to buy one of of their units. And it's a DIY uh, Amazon Echo project. It's on GitHub. So, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of technical knowledge probably to get this thing running. But you completely can. And you can probably modify it beyond that. Well, and that's, that's the way they need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, if they want to outdo everyone else, or at least be competitive, this is the way to do it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, you can 
Yeah, and this way you ensure that people are going to use your your device or a device that you recommend. Right, right, and and, and it can add an innovation uh, on top of it. Can can people use that API to to build it into something else? Right, you're not just in that those boxes or those pucks that that they're uh, the dots and everything that they're they currently they currently have out there for you to buy. Um, so I mean, this could be a really interesting kind of uh, DIY thing, and they could create some new functions out of this as well. They re- this is this is really I think kind of dedicates them to the, we want this to be a platform, you know. And yeah, the platform will eventually lead to you buying more razors from this, you know, but, you know, because in the end, it's still going to be an Amazon service that you're tapping into. It's still going to be Amazon servers that you're tapping into, I think, for now, if I understand this process uh, uh, entirely. So, but a really cool uh, way for that to uh, uh, be getting out there. So I wonder how much it costs to, because you need a, you need a snag of Raspberry Pi 2, USB microphone. Um, mm-hmm. But you probably have the other yeah. return. They say you also need a, a micro SD card and, and some other stuff. Uh, and, and unfortunately, due to the limit, limitations of the voice services, your creation can't listen for trigger words like the Echo or the Echo Dot will. Instead, you do have to hit a button to issue commands, which even I think the cheaper portable version of the Echo, they just uh, they just announced and are, are, I think, currently rolling out. You have to hit the button on. So it's like you got that version of the Echo. It's not just sitting in your kitchen uh, listening for you. So, Hey, I, right. I, I think still, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a good start on something like this. And we'd like to see where it goes from there. So, and of course, uh, we, we talked about a little bit at the top of the show, Batman and Superman. Uh, of course, I don't think you've gotten out to see that just yet. Right. No, I haven't. Uh, someone went without me. Hey, hey. So, you know, Hey, you know, we got some signals crossed. That's okay. But, uh, you can completely <laughs> yeah. go on street view and take a tour of the Batcave and uh, Wayne Manor uh, for that. For that uh, I'm definitely going to. Yeah. Um, it, it, I didn't know it was a thing um, until today. So it is definitely something that I'm going to take a look at. It was weird when I was playing with it a little bit. Um, it didn't seem to be a direct kind of indoor street view kind of thing. Like like you're, you're going around and like I, I hit an arrow... Hold on. Maybe it's because I was an I- on an iPad, uh, but I hit an arrow and it just popped me into the tunnel right away. And I hit it again mm-hmm. and it popped me right into the back cave. So it's not like a step by step by step. It's like, oh, well, when you finally get to the back cave itself, though, you are able to kind of walk around a little more directly. Like I'm actually now walking around the Batmobile, which looks pretty sweet, by the way. I'm checking out his workbench. I'm going to go here. Oh, what's over here? What are these toys over here? Yeah, straight up workbench kind of thing. So I mean, yeah, they definitely like kind of took they they took a street view basically of the set. Well, I want to go up the stairs, maybe. You gonna let me go up the stairs? Oh, I'm going up the stairs. There we go. Um, we're, <laughs> we're gonna go see what's upstairs in the back cave to see where he hangs the cowl. I I think the I think I saw the Robin suit is in here somewhere. There's this kind of testing area. Does this work? I wonder if this works with a uh, cardboard. Um, street views. Yeah. There's actually a, uh, a, a cardboard, um, a cardboard compatible street view. Actually, if you get the street view app itself is cardboard compatible. So I think anything you okay, can pull then. up there, yeah, you can, you can definitely do in, uh, cardboard. So yeah. that is how I'm doing this. <laughs> Go check it out. Oh, I found the I'm weapons. doing cardboard. That way I am Batman. Why does Batman have guns? What the hell? I don't know. That's where I have Decoration? I mean, he's rich. Yeah, yeah. Rich guys like guns, right? Chachi, I know you're excited. We were all geeking out on Boss Battle last year about uh, uh, Pokemon Go from the people that brought us uh, Ingress, the interesting augmented reality game um, that had all of us wandering around our neighborhoods over the last few years. Well, okay, that didn't so much for me, but there's been some demos around on how exactly Pokemon Go will work on your smartphone. Chachi, um, what have you learned about this? And are you as excited as when we first had the concept kind of um, announced, I guess? Sorg, 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 Sorg. I'm going to be the very best. (laughs) Like no one ever was. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. No, I I am still as excited as I was the day they announced this. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it is Pokemon... 
meets ingress, which has my attention fully, sir. Fully. And again, ingress was a cool idea, but like right. I like the concept, but I didn't really get behind the whole factionism and the checking in system and everything that that it had. You put a Pokemon layer on that, and I think I'm going to be invested in that. Hell yeah. I mean, what's going to happen is uh, Busy says that Batman goes hunting. Um, but I, so what happens is you install the app. And if you have the app on the phone without the, the attachment or the, without the wearable, then at this point, I'm guessing you have to have the app open and looking at it mm-hmm. when you're walking around. Uh, but what it'll do is it'll vibrate whenever you are in an area that has a Pokemon. That way you can take action and catch the Pokemon. Um, not only that, but it stated, the, the company stated that the Pokemon will be um, terrain uh, sus- uh, specific and uh, stay true to the game itself. So, so, um, so I'm not gonna have to sorry. dive into a fountain for the uh, water Pokemons or anything. No, you'll actually have to be near a river or an ocean oh. to get the water Pokemon. Oh, so, so, so again, I, I will have to be near those things in order to yeah. do that. Yeah, like, like I said, location specific uh, Pokemon will stay true to what they what they're supposed to be. Wow. So, if you're looking for a rock Pokemon, I'm guessing you know you have to be near like mountains or a cave or something. Um, like a, a rocky terrain, same with the rest of them. Um, but anyhow, and then uh, the the place where you can buy the virtual Pokeballs using uh, points in game, from what I'm uh, guessing, excuse me, um, will be near areas of or places of interest. Um, for they used uh, like museums uh, or libraries as an example. Uh, to get to actually get you out and near or doing things that you need to do, um, and that way you can you can buy the Pokeballs that you can use to catch the Pokemon. Um, they said that you will catch Pokemon uh, a lot of the same Pokemon, um, just because that's the nature of the beast. I mean, the Pokemon are going to be where the Pokemon are going to be. And most likely, you're going to continue to go near those areas on a on a day to day basis. Um, that's just how life works. I mean, I go downtown for work. I come out, leave downtown to come home. So in those areas, you're going to see the same Pokemons, but they said that, uh, you're not going to get tired of catching the same Pokemon, uh, because they will evolve after you catch. If you continue to catch the same Pokemon, they will evolve into different Pokemon, um, of the same type. So. That's cool. I mean, they're, they're, it sounds like, it, and I kind of gathered this considering how quiet they've been, but it seems like they've really put a lot of thought into the problems that Ingress had. Um, so I, I think it's one of those things where uh, they're not just jumping into something that's popular at the time. They're, they're going uh, full on and putting a lot of thought into it. Yeah, and it, it kind of helps have the property, and it, 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 and you can say that, that that Ingress was kind of a beta test for them, right? Right. Um, a very passionate people if they were invested in that, a very geeky thing right. as well. Uh, so I, I think that, that, that it's cool that we are getting a 2.0 of the technology around again something that um, people are going to really dig. So, um, uh, so looking forward to that. I, I, it sounds like the field test. I'm trying to get the video to come up, but it apparently isn't working over at IGN. But apparently, the Japanese field test is underway currently. Yeah, it started yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully, it goes really well because I really want this. Um, I, I mean, to the point where I'm willing to pay for the the wrist wearable mm-hmm. um, that vibrates and gives you an action button. Um, that way you don't always have to be looking at your phone. Interesting. Um, it, it costs extra, but I mean, looking at it, it can't cost more than 20 well, bucks, well, which Ingress, you know, is worth it. Ingress was a free game. Is this going to be a free app or is this going to be a one-time purchase or are they doing freemium? No, the game, the game itself is free. Okay. But they're, they're, they're pointing, they're, they're counting on you uh, purchasing that, that the, 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 the wrist 
the the, the wearable device basically right so right. i mean right. this is nintendo as a fashion device a little bit right and it's shaped like i, I mean it's shaped like a teardrop pokeball mm-hmm. so i'm already in mm-hmm. I, I mean yeah i mean at uh, Pokemon will be limited to natural habitats, so head to a river or ocean if you want to catch Squirtle or Poliwhirl. Um, it says you can buy eggs at the Pokestop and hatch it by walking uh, a certain number of steps. So, I mean, it's everything you want in um, healthy Pokemon playing. That's great. By the way, I was searching. It looked like there was like some kind of uh, fun video. It, it was in it was in Portuguese or Spanish or something, but it was like somebody mm-hmm. going on these Pokemon Go adventures and then getting mugged. Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was kind of, people are already kind of poking fun at this a little bit, but I like it. Like, right. again, it's like the grass and, and like the, the footage this is the, the alleged, uh, gameplay footage from South by Southwest that we have here. And again, like it's, 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 you know, the Pokemon are in the grass overlaid. This is augmented reality. You're seeing the characters over top, um, um, basically the maps like Google maps, basically, uh, a lot right. of what, like a lot of like what, what, uh, Ingress did as well except for this kind of like pokeball sitting there on 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 the grass kind of thing so i, I think that's going to be a lot of fun um and you're going to see this puts it into a context that i'm way more behind than i was before mm-hmm. i mean i'm not i'm not I'm not second guessing my want of this game exactly exactly or this app i don't know if you can call it a game i don't know a game app i mean it's it's all mobile and it is going to be i believe for both iphone and android right off the bat so, so that'll be nice that, um, you know, we can all kind of jump in on that. So hopefully cross compatible right. as far as, uh, um, opponents as well. So, all right, Chachi, it's been fun. It has been fun. It's been fun. It's been, this more often. it's been awesome. We should get you on more often. Uh, but, uh, of course, Hey, uh, big shout outs. Of course, our friend, you jag off. Uh, he was in the news at the Beaver County in the Beaver County Times uh, today. He's actually going to be at the Home and Garden Show up there in Beaver. Um, I think he's going to be doing a presentation and having a book signing. So uh, shout out to him, a friend of the show, and go find out more information about the. Uh, I believe it's the Beaver. I believe it's the Beaver County Times. Uh, uh, Home and Garden Show up that way, and, uh, north of the city. Our friend Kim Lyons uh, put out, "Hey, there's a uh, meetup group, um, Ona." ONA. Um, it's a, a, a journalist, uh, blogger and producers, etc. cetera. Um, meetup. I know she had coming up. I want to make sure that hasn't passed, but she's got a group that she's getting together there. And that's actually tomorrow, March 30th. Uh, have drinks with the PRSA. Look for ONA Pittsburgh on meetup for more information for that. If you are any of those things that I mentioned, and of course, please go check out our friends at rivers edge, pgh.com. We're there live, uh, or not live straight live streaming 8 a.m. every Thursday after Funny Money. And uh, go check out the rest of this that they have going on as well. Chachi, anything coming up? What do you got? What's going on in Insert Coin these days? Uh, you know, articles going up uh, a lot. Um, we we record Thursday nights for the show that goes up the following Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, we reformatted the show a lot. So if you didn't like the old format, give us another shot. Um, it's more of a one on uh, one, three way discussion on a set particular topic instead of covering what's happening that That's everyone good. else is doing it's a little less timely so you can just kind of drop into some of the conversations there yeah yeah i mean it's not not time dependent um whenever you listen to it uh it, it is relevant awesome go check it out insert coin to begin.com Dot com. for that yep. and a whole bunch of other articles um and of course please check out everything at awesomecast.net for this uh podcast and uh, uh subscribe to everything check out past episodes in the awesome chats as well we've had a lot of great conversations here over the years and uh, uh please uh check us out on awesomecast on the twitter and awesomecast on the facebook group as well and uh, uh drop us a line again at, at, at any of those or awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com any awesome things you want to share that you think we should talk to talk about on the show just like ryan haggerty did here this week or other friends of ours like doug durda like uh like uh like, like nero of the old awful show uh matt weller out there and other friends as well big thanks to missy hi missy She's upstairs watching the show on the Chromecast right now, actually. Uh, she's been helping with the show notes and the tweets all night long and wrangling the chat room as well. Uh, and thank you so much to our awesome chat room at Chachi Says, uh, our awesome chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday night. Thanks to our awesome chat room. Even our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.